Members of the House, please be seated. Will the House come to order? Mr. Clerk. Aloha and good afternoon. Today's invocation will be delivered by Mr. Kenneth Wong. Will the members who wish to participate please rise? Speaker Suki, members of the House, thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is a real honor for me. You can sit. <laughs> Growing up, I heard of Good Friday, but I didn't really know what it was about. When I became a Christian at 35 years of age, I learned that in Good Friday, God's only son, Jesus, was struck 39 times with a whip containing shards of metal and glass that tore out his flesh, and then he was crucified. What's so good about that? Why do they call it Good Friday? I mean, we all heard of Pauhana Friday, that's good. We all heard of TGIF, thank God it's Friday, that's good. Sandy Beach on a Friday afternoon, five feet in glassy, that's good. If it was up to me, Knowing what happened on that Friday, I would call it Bad Friday. It, it puzzled me, so I started doing some research, and this is what I discovered. Jesus was crucified on that Friday to take upon himself my sins, your sins, and all the sins of the entire world. Sins that prevent us from peace in our lives from leading productive lives, sins like lying, cheating, stealing, conniving, disrespecting our kupuna, mistreating people, and on and on and on. Basically, sin is doing anything that is not pono. Why would Akua have his only son crucified on that Friday and then resurrect him on Easter Sunday? Because a living Jesus brings us not only eternal life in heaven, but abundant life on earth. He promises a life of love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control when we follow him. A resurrected Jesus on an Easter Sunday proves that he really did take away our sins on that Friday. If Jesus was not resurrected, then his crucifixion and his claim that he takes away the sins of the world would mean nothing. Jesus' Friday started off looking really bad. But what looked like defeat actually turned into victory. He ended up with a pretty good three-day weekend. And that's why Good Friday is called Good Friday. 
It's not how you start, but how you finish. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Sin is like walking around with a bowling ball hanging from a chain around your neck. It weighs us down, defeating us. Good Friday reminds us that Jesus exists to remove that chain and ball from around our necks. And Easter Sunday reminds us that Jesus exists to give us life and life abundantly. God has placed each and every one of you in a position of power and authority. In Luke chapter 12, verse 48 of the Bible, it says, from everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from one to whom much has been entrusted, even more accountability will be demanded. He has given each and every one of you a purpose in life. Have you found God's purpose in your life? You can do good or you can do bad. And I'm going to pray that God helps you to do good. Let's pule. Dear Jesus, in remembrance of Good Friday, I ask that you open up your arms when we come to you and ask you to forgive our sins. You have entrusted these men and women with much authority and much power and responsibility. I pray that you place in each and every one of them your mind, your wisdom, your heart, your grace, your peace, your love, your aloha, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Amen. Mahalo plenty. God bless you. Have a great three-day weekend. And aloha ke akua. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Mr. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Mr. Aquino? Ms. Bellotti? Mr. Brower? Mr. Cachola? Mr. Choi? Mr. Cregan? Mr. Cullen? Ms. Decoit? Ms. Evans? Ms. Fukumoto Chang? Ms. Har? Mr. Hashem? Ms. Ichiyama? Mr. Ng. Excused. Mr. Ito. Mr. Johansson. Ms. Jordan. Mr. Kawakami. Mr. Keoho Kalole. Mr. Kobayashi. Mr. Kong. Excused. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lopresti. Ms. Lowen. She's here. Ms. Luke. Ms. Matsumoto, Mr. McDermott, Mr. McKelvey, Ms. Morikawa, Mr. Nakashima, Mr. Nishimoto, Mr. Ono, Mr. Onishi, Mr. Oshiro, Mr. Poha, Mr. Rhodes, Mr. Saiki, Ms. San Buenaventura, Mr. Say. Excused. Mr. Suki, Mr. Takayama, Mr. Takumi, Ms. Thielen, Mr. Tokioka, Mr. Tsuji, Ms. Tupola, excused, Mr. Ward, Mr. Woodson, excused, Mr. Yamane, Mr. Yamashita, Mr. Speaker, here, Mr. Speaker, 46 members are present, five are excused. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Please note the presence of Speaker Meredith Say. Reading of the journal, Representative Evans. 
Mr. Speaker, I move we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 13th through the 23rd days and approve the same as though read throughout. Thank you very much. Representative Puha. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded that the journal days 13 through 23 be approved. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed saying no. The motion is carried. Mr. Clerk, are there any messages from the governor? Mr. Speaker, there are none. Thank you very much. Mr. Clerk, are there any Senate communications? Yes, Mr. Speaker, we are in receipt of communications transmitting the noted Senate concurrent resolutions, both having been adopted in the Senate. We are in further receipt of communications returning the noted House bills, both having passed third reading in the Senate. Thank you very much. Representative Psyche. Mr. Speaker, I move to disagree to the amendments made by the Senate to the noted House bills with Senate drafts. Thank you very much. Representative Evans. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Thank you very much. This is a procedural vote. It will be also a voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is carried. Members, are there any introductions? Yes, Representative San Buenaventura. Um, I would like to introduce a witness in many of my hearings, Demont Connor, from Nanakuli, his wife, Rachel Connor, um, their Tutu Ina Agkalon, and they are here to celebrate the ninth birthday of their grandchild, Harley. Could you please, we are welcome to the House of Representatives. <laughs> Happy birthday, Harley. Thank you, Representative. Further introductions, members? Yes, Representative Jordan, followed by Representative McDermott. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker and members, I would like to extend a warm welcome of aloha to members of the Habitat for Humanity or who are here with us today in the gallery. Please hold your applause while I address each one of them. They include um, Jim Murphy of Honolulu Habitat, Stephen Spears of Maui, Oh, he didn't make it, sorry. Um, also present will be Sherry Dodson. She's from Maui. And Jean Lilly of the Habitat State Association. Um, with Gary Passion, the State President, State Association Board of Directors. And we all know Mr. Massingale. Massingale, yes. I was thinking first name first. George. George. I should have remembered that. You know, being Georgette, I should have known better. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, George. Um, I would like to also um, add members that I've had a great opportunity for a long number of years to work with the Leeward Habitat, who wasn't able to be with us here today. They built many homes in my district and changed many lives with their programs. I would also like to take just a moment to go over a few numbers that these great individuals have provided to our state since 1989. Habitat for Humanity, as well as their affiliates, have built more than 510 homes across our state, rehabilitated more than 150 homes, and in 2015, last year, they completed 42 new affordable homes. They also last year on Maui Habitat completed its very first low-income condominium. Provided homes for up to 16 Habitat families and they did so with all volunteer and sweat equity. I'm not sure if anybody has been on a Habitat for Humanity site, but they're all volunteers as well as the homeowners who go through many financial literacy classes just to get to that, that point of hammering the nails. What is even more notable is that Habitat provides zero interest mortgages in today's day and age, zero mortgage interest to their homeowners. They allow very low income families a chance at homeownership. Members have been, I've been told that the average mortgage payment for these homeowners is roughly $550. When we all know 
A voucher from the state could be $1,300 or $1,500. Rents going almost $3,000. This is a chance for a family to be able to remain here. Member, please join me in welcoming these great individuals from Habitat for Humanity that are here with us today. Thank you for your great work. I'd also like to just to provide a little story because I did know an individual. Her mother owned a piece of property and the home became so dilapidated that they couldn't live in it any longer. And the family was several generations of families. And those families had to split up into different homes once they couldn't habitat, habitat their old home. It was many, many years, but through Habitat for Humanity, they were able to get financial literacy, they were able to tear down their old home and rebuild a, a brand new home right off of Mill Street in Waianae, and they were able to bring all the family back together, and now they reside in that home. So, I mean, it, it is, they have great success stories. Sometimes it takes a long time for the families to get ready to be approved for even a $550 mortgage, and then to get all that sweat equity and then put all that effort into building their home again. But just to see the family smiling and be able to save a family's home, they not only work on private properties, they also help on DHHL, lands, as well as other properties in the state. So I'd really, really like to thank them for all their great work that they've done. And I look forward to some of the great success that we're going to have in the near future with them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. May I please um, have permission to submit their names into the journal? So ordered. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Yes, Representative McDermott. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I understand we have some uh, eager young minds in the gallery with us today, some high school students here to learn about civics. Some of them are from Campbell High School. I think they're from a collection of high schools. Would you young folks please rise to be recognized? Let's give them a hand, members. All of you, please. All of you stand up. Thank you very much, Representative. Thank you. Any, yes, Representative Lopreste. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Beat me to the punch on that. Uh, welcome, Campbell uh, High School. Uh, I wanted to also recognize George Massengill just as a former staffer of mine last year. I really appreciate the, the work he did for the office and for the people of EVA. Thank you, George. I uh, also wanted to uh, recognize Re uh, Reverend Bob Nakata and a friend of mine, Michael Galoyu, um, from Kapole. So, thank you. I'll put a hand for them. Thank you very much, Representative. Yes, Representative Morikawa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was supposed to have recognized Stephen Spears from Habitat, but he did have to leave. But I wanted to make note of a couple of things on Kauai. You know, Kauai Habitat uh, traces its roots back to 1992. And if, uh, for those of you who remember, that was the year of Hurricane Iniki. They, they destroyed were 1,500 homes and damaged about 5,000 ho homes, excuse me. So since then, Kauai Habitat has built over 117 affordable homes. Um, in the next two years, um, they're gonna be very busy on Kauai because Stephen and his staff will be undertaking a major home building campaign in my district known as Eleele Luna Subdivision. So thank you, Kauai, for Kauai Habitat. Thank you very much, Representative. Yes, Representative Coit. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I would also like to recognize Habitat for Humanity, and in particular, Maui and Molokai's habitats. First, I'd like to give a shout out to Sherry Dotson, uh, the Maui Habitat Executive Director. She has been with the organization since 2003 and has literally built dozens for new and affordable homes on Maui. The most recent project was the completion of a 16-unit condominium at Kahawai, and now they have begun building the first of 10 new homes in Ka Kahoma, in Lahaina, in West Maui. Uh, I would also like to recognize, uh, I don't, I, and I think she's not here, uh, Kyo Hirata from the Molokai Habitat. Uh, three years ago, the Molokai Habitat for Humanity received a $290,000 grant from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to allow the organization to build four to 10 homes over the next few years, which they are doing. I would also like to mention the Maui Habitat Restore, in addition to carrying all the necessary building materials to construct or rehabilitate a home in the Maui Restore. 
You can find everything from dining room tables and chairs to new refrigerators, washers, and dryers. Members, if you haven't been to the Habitat Restore, you really need to go, and I can guarantee you that you would find something you need at very reasonable prices. And lastly, I would like to say a mahalo to the Hawaii Habitat State Association for sharing such a wonderful breakfast with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Representative. Yes, Representative Cragen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd also like to recognize uh, West, uh, West Hawaii Habitat for Humanity and Habitat for Humanity in general. I'm very familiar with their program, the Executive Director Patrick Herney. Since 2002, our West Hawaii Habitat has been building decent, affordable homes on the west side of our island. My very first community event as a legislator in early 2014 was the dedication of a house in Ocean View built by Habitat for Humanity for one of our veterans. I will note for the record that the cost of that home was increased because of the requirement of a septic system over a cesspool. It was going to be very expensive as that lot was almost a solid rock. Fortunately, a contractor donated most of his time so the cost was kept to a minimum. So thank you to West Hawaii and to Patrick who had to leave for their service. And those who are here from West Hawaii, please rise to be recognized by your house. And if no one, how about George? Go ahead, get up there. Thank you, George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further introductions, members? Yes, Representative Lowen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure because I have a meeting scheduled later this afternoon, but I think there may be some students over here from Konawina High School for Kick Butts Day. Are there any students from Konawina? Please stand up. So welcome over here. I know you don't make it very often, and we'll see you later this afternoon, and permission to enter their names into the journal. Absolutely, Representative. Welcome. So ordered. Thank you. Yes, Representative Kawakami. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, it's an absolute honor and a privilege that on behalf of the Koi delegation, all the way from the beautiful island of Koi, the 14th district, we have some youngsters joining us with the Topaco Free Day up in the gallery. And if they may rise as they call their names, Shailin Demelo Oliveira, Haoli Lopez, Shayna Sa, and they're accompanied by Valerie Saiki. Welcome to the house. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further introductions, members? Yes, Representative Bilotti. Uh, Mr. Speaker, just to um, uh, add on to um, the previous two speakers, if we could just have all of the members of the um, Youth Council of the Coalition for Tobacco Free Hawaii, please stand and be recognized. They are here again for Kick Butts Day. We have members from Oahu, Kona, Hilo, Maui, Molokai, and Kauai. So if they could all rise, and if I may in insert their names into the journal member. Absolutely, so ordered. How about another hand, members? Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Any further introductions, members? Yes, Representative Coy, a second time. Yes, sorry, Mr. Speaker. Um, again, I, um, being that we have very few uh, visitors from the island of Molokai, I would also like to introduce from kick butts of Molokai High and Middle School, Linnell Kariaga Abafo, uh, Dylan Aquino, Hoku Horsewell Carroll, and Chanel Kalili, if you would please stand and be recognized by the house if you're here. Okay, we must have another delay in Ohana Airlines. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Representative. Yes, Representative Cachola. Mr. Speaker, I'm very honored to present to you a former member of this house and head of FACE, the very Reverend Bob Nakata. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> He's uh, kind of shy, he doesn't want to stand. <laughs> Thank you. Any further introductions, members? If not, Representative Psyche. I'm sorry, members, we're on item number five, reports of standing committees, Representative Psyche. Mr. Speaker, I move to adopt SCR numbers 1195-16 through 13-16 on pages 2 through 31, and the attached Senate bills as may be amended past second reading and or be referred to their designated committees. Thank you very much, Representative Evans. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Thank you very much. Moved and seconded. Discussion on these second reading bills. Top of page two, Stancom Report 1195. Stancom Report number 1196. Stancom Report number 1197. Stancom Report number 1198. 
Stancom report number 1199. Stancom report number 1200. Stancom report number 1201. Stancom report number 1202. Stancom report number 1203. Stancom report number 1204. Stancom report number 1205. Stancom report number 1206. Stancom report number 1207. Top Mr. of page Speaker? five. Yes, Representative Jordan. Ooh, a little rolling a little fast there. Yes, I, I humbly apologize. What yes. uh, Stancom report, Representative? 1207. 1207. Ah. Uh, Please note my strong reservations on this, Mr. Speaker. WR it is. I'm not comfortable with um, allowing um, the Office of Elections to have access to databases at this point in time, Mr. Speaker. And I believe this may go to finance. Well, hopefully, I'll have this discussion. Yes, later. you are correct. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. WR duly noted. Any further discussion? Stand camera report number 1207. If not, I know we're ro rolling at a rapid pace. Uh, we've got about 38 pages. Stand camera report number 1208. Yes, Representative McDermott. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of this measure. Uh, the, the fee is very nominal, and normally I'm against the increases of fees. However, this service is widely available for free if you have an account at a bank or a credit union. They do it as a courtesy. This might be an opportunity for us to get out of regulating this all together. Um, that's something perhaps we should think about in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? Stand come report number 1208. If not, stand come report number 1209. Stand come report number 1210. Stand come report number 1211. Top of page six, stand come report number 1212. Stancom report number 1213. Stancom report number 1214. Stancom report number 1215. Representative Johansson. Uh, thank you. In support with permission to insert written comments. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion? Stancom report number 1215. If not, thank you. Top of page 7. Stancom report number 1216. Stancom report number 1217. Stand come report number 1218. Stand come report number 1219. Representative McDermott. Speaker, just reservations. I have no concerns. I support it. I have reservations. I have no concerns about the naming, particularly for anyone who's given their life in public service to our country or state. It's just the priority of the school construction. That's so. Thank right. you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion on stand come report number 1219? If not, thank you very much. Members, top of page 8. Stancom report number 1220. Stancom report number 1221. Stancom report number 1222. Stancom report number 1223. Top of page 9. 1224. Stancom report number 1225. Stancom report number 1226. Stand come report number 1227. Top of page 10. Stand come report number 1228. Stand come report number 1229. Representative McDermott. You are going at a wicked pace, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you. I'm going to vote no on this, sir. Thank so you. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion? Stand come report number 1229. Yes, Representative McKelvey. I, I, Mr. Speaker, I do stand in support, but I just want to pu publicly mark that the support is contingent upon general fund support for this to happen because, as was pointed out in testimony, if there is no general fund support for this at all, the fees for each student could dr dramatically rise, even if we spread the class out as large as possible to all the schools, regardless of the vocational license that potentially could be impacted. So I hope the next committee, when they hear this, will help to work with education and CBC for that general fund support. Otherwise, I may not be able to support this at the very end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion? Again, members, we're on stand come report number 1229. Thank you. Stand come report number 1230. Stand come report number 1231. 
Top of page 11. Stancom report number 1232. Stancom report number 1233, Representative McDermott. Speaker, I stand in support with reservations. So ordered. I voted against this measure on third reading when it left the House. This one is a substantially better measure, I do believe, because it uh, elevated the criteria to bring lawsuits from substantially similar, which is very vague and ambiguous, to substantially equal. So for that reason, I support it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? Stancom report number 1233. If not, thank you, members. Stancom report number 1234. Stancom report number 1235. Stancom report number 1236. Yes, Representative Jordan. Uh, I have reservations on this one currently. I don't think we should be changing this, but I'm going to listen to the dialogue in finance. So Thank ordered. You, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. Yes, Representative Lepreste. Reservation. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? Stancom report number 1236. If not, thank you. Speaker. Yes, Representative. Reservations, Ward. please. So ordered. Thank you, Representative. Yes, Representative McKelvey. Uh, same request. So ordered. WR for McKelvey. Further discussion, members? We are still on Stancom Report number 1236. If not, thank you very much. Stancom Report number 1237. Discussion. Stancom Report number 1238. Stancom Report number 1239. Stancom report number 1240. Stancom report number 1241. Stancom report number 1242. Stancom report number 1243. Top of page 14, Stancom report number 1244. Stancom report number 1245. Stancom report number 1246. Stancom report number 1247, top of page 15, Stancom report number 1248, Stancom report number 1249, Stancom report number 1250, and Stancom report number 1251. Top of page 16, Stancom report number 1252. Representative Speaker, Ward. Uh, reservations, please. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Further discussion? We're on Stancom Report number 1252. Thank you very much. Stancom Report number 1253. Stancom Report number 1254. Stancom Report number 1255. Top of page 17, Stancom Report number 1256. Yes, Representative Jordan. Please note my reservations on this measure. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? Not thank you. Stancom report number 1257. Stancom report number 1258. Stancom report number 1259. Top of page 18. Stancom report number 1260. Stancom report number 1261. Stancom report number 1262. Stancom report number 1263. Top of page 19, Stancom report number 1264, Stancom report number 1265, Stancom report number 1266, Stancom report number 1267. Top of page 20, yes, Representative McKelvey. Uh, can we go back to 1266 for one Absolutely, second. 1266, one. Representative McKelvey. Uh, just because in committee I said that the delimitator was 300,000 square miles, and upon further review, that would pretty much be the size of China. So the Big Island is actually 3,000 square miles, and that's the proper thing, and it's in the bill now. So just want to let everybody know who's in committee when I said 300,000 miles. We're not trying to add China to our prescription network benefits. Yeah, yes, correction, duly noted, Representative McCovey, uh, for what purpose do you rise in support in in support with that with that, with, with that clarification for the record okay. absolutely thank you very much representative appreciate it any further discussion we're back on stancom report number 1266 thank you members we already completed uh, stancom report number 1267 i believe that will put us at stancom report number 1268 top of page 20. discussion thank you very much stancom report number 1269 any discussion 
Stancom report number 1270, Stancom report number 1271, top of page 21, Stancom report number 1272, Representative Thielen. Surprise. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, in support. I'm, I'm in strong support, but I wanted to point out a couple of things to the chair and members of finance. Um, on page 17 of the bill, this is requiring um, the farmers to have case-hardened locks and chains to limit anyone getting near a plant that won't get anyone high. I mean, the restrictions are really pretty absurd. And it goes on on page 17, which I hope all of it will be eliminated, that, um, that they, the farmer would have to mark each plant. I mean, this is nuts. This isn't required under federal law, and it wasn't required for the Waimanalo project. There's no reason to make this so um, onerous. And then you go on to page 18, and they continue with some really um, unreasonable and unnecessary restrictions. And then the, the clincher is on subsection K on page 18. This will hurt the small farmers. This wouldn't hurt a big operation like A and B, but it would hurt the ranchers that want to grow hemp for animal forage. It would hurt the egg producers that want the good omega benefits in the eggs because the eggs are more valuable and more healthy. So you go to subsection K and they have restrictions that local smaller farmers are just going to throw up their hands and say, forget it. A physical barrier such as a hoop house or a row cover. What are we talking about with a plant that grew out in the open in Waimanalo, did very well, and it can grow in other places in our state? So I strongly encourage the finance committee and the finance chair to remove those unnecessary provisions, and then we have a bill that can move forward. And not only can A and B grow, but so can our local um, cattle ranchers, egg producers, and others. And we will see the benefit of industrial hemp. Thank you. Thank you very much for your concerns. I'm sure the finance chair will take those into consideration along with her committee. Thank you very much. Representative McKelvey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for those very reasons, I'm going to go with reservations on so, the measure. I'd like to adopt the words of the previous speaker. So ordered. They were my own. And to note, you probably have a better chance of getting high smoking the signs that they want to put on the plant than you do the plant itself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, Representative Ng. Um, in support. In support. Please proceed. But I will uh, mention a few of my concerns. Um, first, I'd like to adopt the words of the Representative Fukailua. So ordered. Uh, we had a bill that crossed over to the Senate, which was very open. It, it was a free market type of bill, um, opened the industry out to anybody who wants to participate. You simply need to sign a memo, memorandum of understanding with the Department of Agriculture. That model was based on what has been successful in Kentucky and Colorado, which, where there's over 1,000 growers now um, growing industrial hemp uh, without any repercussions from the DEA or the federal authorities um, in general. And this bill, when you read through the language, it tends to treat industrial hemp as a drug, and not just the growing and selling of it, but you know, right now you can go on Amazon and you can buy hemp seeds to plant or eat or to cook with or whatever. But uh, you know, if this bill passes, there could be questions of whether you can still do that without all these procedures. Um, Alexander and Baldwin themselves said, hey, Caniello, we support your language a lot better than this uh, overly comprehensive, verbose bill. Uh, but they did try to propose amendments um, in order to make our bill uh, limited to just one corporation or one pilot project. And you know, as a legislature and looking to open up a new industry for our economy here in Hawaii and diversify our economy here in Hawaii, I don't think we should be um, limiting it to one corporation just because they asked. Um, and you know, moving on, I hope that we could adopt language that's, that's not maybe not identical, but a lot closer to what we proposed uh, in the House. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. 
Thank you very much. Any further discussion, members? We are still on stand. Can report number 1272. Okay, thank you very much. Stand camera report number 1273. Representative Jordan. Please note my reservations on this, Mr. Speaker. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? If not, stand camera report number 1274. Stand camera report number 1275. Yes, Representative Lopreste. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support, but support. I did want to express some concerns. I, I support this measure for the law, use of law enforcement cameras. Uh, in fact, it has, I think, the entirety of my HP 1738 put into it, but it's been substantially changed, as I understand it, and that gives me some cause for concern. Um, the, the bill that I had introduced that goes along with this idea helps protect privacy rights. I don't think it's a good idea that just because any time a citizen walks in front of a police officer, they lose their Fourth Amendment right to privacy. Uh, because um, I I'm concerned that the way that some of the language in this bill is being altered or, or evolving, it it's going to allow that any time you have any interaction with an officer, it, it could be on YouTube. You know, Just because uh, somebody makes a noise complaint or an officer has a conversation with you doesn't mean that it should now be just accessible to the media or the public. God forbid somebody loses a loved one in a car accident. Now what the footage is going to be on YouTube and the, and the 6 o'clock news. I don't think anybody uh, should have to go through that. For criminal purposes, I'm concerned it could pollute jury pools if it's just automatically available um, to the public if there's an arrest or, or some uh, violent altercation even. Certainly it should be available for review. Uh, I think there should be some judicial controls as to when footage is released. Uh, but I am very concerned about protecting Fourth Amendment rights while also providing for accountability. But I think we also have to concern ourselves with protecting the police officers themselves and their rights to privacy. Just because they have a conversation at lunch doesn't mean that their administrator should be able to review everything they said that day and in a sense spy on what they're doing um, in, in their downtime just because they have um, a camera on. I know it's second reading, but uh, I, I put all this out there for us to consider when it gets to finance. Thank you. Very good points. I just want to clarify, Representative, that was support, support with reservations? No, I'm, I'm in support, but Full I have support. concerns. But the Thank concerns you. are duly noted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further discussion, members? Stan, can report number 1275, Representative Har. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I realize that it is second reading uh, in support with reservations. So ordered. But as this bill has a clean date, I will be voting with reservations. May I request permission to enter written comments into the journal? So ordered. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members, on this measure? If not, thank you very much. Top of page 22. Stand from report number 1276, discussion. Yes, Representative Thielen, followed by Representative Lowen. Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to vote no on this measure. I know it's been gutted, and it's sitting out there sort of as a empty bill, but the problem is <clears throat> the underlying purpose of that bill was to take away the county's authority over geothermal. And we all know what can happen to a bill as it moves through the process. What was gutted can be replaced. So I would rather just see the bill stop in its tracks now and let the Big Island County of Hawaii deal with this on a local basis. So a firm no vote, sir. Thank you very much. Representative Lowen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just please note my reservations. So ordered. Thank you, Representative. Any further discussion? Representative Buena Ventura. Reservations. So ordered. Thank you very much. Yes, Speaker. Representative Ward. Uh, same request. So ordered. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Yes, Representative Cragen. Reservations, please. So Thank ordered. You. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? If not, thank you very much. Members, we're going to move on to Stancom Report number 1277. Stancom Report number 1278. Stancom Report number 1279. Representative Cragen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in strong opposition. Opposition, to please this proceed. Bill. Uh, may I be allowed to provide written comments to the journal and some brief comments? So ordered. Okay. Also, you know, you may be asked why I'm objecting this bill on second reading, but this does have a good date, and I believe that it could be salvaged in some way. 
I'm a physician, after all. I was a medical director of a biotech vaccine company. I have vaccine patents. So don't I want to protect poor, helpless patients in the hospital against flu? What kind of monster am I? Well, if you look at this bill, you think that there was some tremendous advance in vaccine technology, such a stunning advance that would warrant infringing the rights of individuals to protect their own bodies against harm. After all, haven't women been demanding autonomy over their bodies for years? But where is the breakthrough? The reality is that this is about a push by big pharma to ensure that they make money from vaccines, even if those are at times lousy vaccines and they hurt people. Big pharmacy has also gotten into the Vaccine Profiteering Act big time, and they are all supporting this bill. The secret sweetener is that Medicare will give the hospitals 2% more for their billings if they achieve 90% uptake of flu vaccine among their employees. What are they doing in other states? Given the care for the hospitals, I can now understand the rush to push through bills in other state legislatures. But many of these bills in other states have better protections and options for their employees. For example, they often require that an employee who do not receive the vaccine to wear a surgical mask during flu season. Some have argued that this is a shaming technique, but the hospitals have argued vehemently that this is about patient protection. They also provided exemptions for philosophical objections, which this bill does not. Yet some years, the vaccine only provides 18% protection or less. And theoretically, according to the CDC, if the CDC guesses wrong about the strains involved, there could be no protection, and yet there could be substantial risk. So if there is less than 20 protection from vaccines, why don't hospitals require surgical masks of all employees during flu season? As if they are correct, these masks will protect their patients. What is the downside of that? Another aspect is compensation for vaccine injuries. There is a voluntary system of reporting adverse effects to vaccines called VAERS, or the Vaccine Diverse Event Reporting System. Because it is voluntary and there is justifiable cynicism of its non-use, perhaps only 5% of adverse events are reported. The CDC claims perhaps 10%, but others differ. What are some of the side effects? The list is quite long, but two stand out. Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a progressive paralysis caused by the body's attack in its own nervous system. Some people die from this. I have seen one young man and taken care of that young man on a ventilator for over six months before he partially recovered. And let me tell you about what happened to a friend of a friend. He was working as a nursing man, but his business was not thriving, so he returned to school, was trained as a respiratory therapist. He then applied to a hospital. He was told he would have to receive a panel of vaccines. He said that he had already had those diseases and asked that they do antibody screening instead. That was the standard of care when I worked for Kaiser briefly. I didn't need any vaccines as I was already immune. They insisted he receive vaccines, so he received them. He developed Guillain-Barre syndrome and became progressively paralyzed. Guillain-Barre syndrome is caused by your immune system attacking your nervous system, replacing your antibody-laden plasma. A process called plasmapheresis was tried. Unfortunately, air was introduced accidentally into the IV lines, and the air went to his brain and caused a massive stroke. He survived, but was permanently impaired. He and his wife were financially devastated, and it took years of fighting before they received any compensation. Their lives were ruined. The informed consent document from the CDC also acknowledges that people can be killed by that shot. The most likely reason for this is that an anaphylaxis reaction often caused by an egg allergy, although not all flu vaccines contain egg. Some versions of flu vaccine also contain mercury, although there are safer alternatives. Safer but not cheaper. The next issue is who pays if someone is injured by vaccines. After a number of successful suits against vaccine makers for brain damage due to pertussis, vaccine manufacturers were folded. Speaker? Yes, Representative McKelvey. Uh, since I'm op opposition to, I'll yield my time. Okay, thanks. thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Thank you. A national vaccine injury compensation program was thus set up. For a small amount of 75 cents per dose, vaccine manufacturers were largely off the hook. Instead, injured parties had to file their claims in the vaccine court in Washington, D.C. The court seemed like a good idea, but in practice, it is a sham. The government has unlimited resources to pay its witnesses, and those witnesses, as in the workers' compensation system, can often be paid liars. The injured parties, however, have to pay their witnesses up front, and that all legal fees may be covered after the fact, it is very difficult to get legal representation, and without that, you can almost forget any compensation. 
I was a witness for two children in the vaccine court who lost most of their hearing after improperly given Hib vaccines. One of them who received the improper vaccine in 15 months developed neurologic symptoms consistent with autism spectrum disorder and was still unable to read in his teens. His sister who received the vaccine at four years old age after the brain was fully developed is, the, excuse me, is now at Dartmouth on a, a $50,000 scholarship. Neither of these children received any compensation for their injuries, none. The last thing that I think is egregious is that this bill is a major infringement on employees' rights and should have been heard in the Labor Committee, and it was not. I think that using the state's power to force this issue, not based on medical science but on money issues, while ignoring the individual philosophical objections of the recipients, is reprehensible. I would propose that given the amount of money the hospitals receive, it would behoove them to use a carrot approach and support funding. I would support funding a pilot program at Heal Hospital to give perhaps $200 to an employee if they receive the vaccine. I think that a program of surgical masks could also be employed given the increased protections that mainland hospitals claim. This could be compared as a control group to Kona Hospital within the HHSC system and a report provided to the legislature for further evaluation next session. Given the potential savings to the system, I think this is a more reasonable approach. I do think, however, that close attention be given to the informed consent component of this program and to the programs in pharmacies. I doubt people are being told the vaccines can paralyze them or kill them, and I think the compensation or lack thereof for injury should also be explained. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further Speaker. discussion? Yes, Representative Ward. Speaker, I was going to vote with reservations on this bill, but with the usually calm, quiet, uh, sometimes I can't even hear him speak, but with the commitment that he just gave, I'm going to go for a no vote, Mr. No Speaker. No vote, so ordered. And while he was speaking, I was remembering when I was the Peace Corps Country Director in East Timor, we had to vary the vaccines with our volunteers. And they would tell me that, you know, if you use the North American one, you can have this rate of effect. If you use the African or the Southeast Asian one, this really sometimes is a crapshoot. So we think when we get a flu shot, we're really getting what we're supposed to be getting. The probabilities are, as the good gentleman and the Peace Corps volunteer himself has just said, it's a crapshoot. And now to force it, and I didn't know it was for the big farm guys that were doing it. For all of those reasons, Mr. Speaker, this is not a good policy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. I've got Representative San Buenaventura and a couple others. Yes. With reservation. So ordered. I'm one of those who annually take my flu vaccination. I, I and my family do whatever the doctor tells us to do as far as taking vaccinations. But I also agree with um, the representative from Ka'u. My brother got Guillain-Barre syndrome because of a flu shot. He was paralyzed mandating vaccinations that we think is so innocuous as the flu without considering other incentives or other less invasive means, such as surgical mask, I believe is foolhardy. How, for those reasons, it's with reservations. Thank you very much. Representative Bolotti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and support. Support, please proceed. Very brief. I just want to point out that this is a bill that is limited in scope to hospital workers. There are exemptions, religious exemptions, as well as a medical exemption for individuals if contraindicated for those individuals. Uh, and I would also note, Mr. Speaker, you know, before the vaccines, and, and the flu vaccine is, is very, you know, when people say, well, it's not clinically tested, well, it's not because we understand the pathology of the flu vaccine and every year it's different because scientists around the world are trying to determine which, which is going to be the, the flu, that, flu vaccine that's going to be most effective. Before the onset of flu vaccines, I just want to point out to members, in 1918, the pandemic of influenza led to 50 million deaths statewide. This is an issue of public health, and I urge you to look at the many, many, many medical societies that are standing behind in support of this measure. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. Further discussion, Representative Ng, followed by Representative McDermott, followed by Representative Thielen. No vote. Followed by Representative Lowen. Uh, yes, Representative McDermott, followed by Thielen, followed by Lowen. No vote, Mr. Speaker, and I'd just like to compliment the good doctor on his devastating remarks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Representative Thielen, follow, followed by Representative Lowen. No vote, please. So, so ordered. Representative Lowen. Uh, reservations, please. So ordered. Thank you very much. Further discussion, Representative Lopreste, followed by Representative Kobayashi. Reservations. So ordered. Representative Kobayashi. 
Mr. Speaker, in support, in support I would note proceed. that this uh, bill contains ex an exemption um, for those people working in hospitals who do not want a flu shot. You can wear a mask. Um, it is true that no vaccine is 100% effective. At the same time, no vaccine is 100% safe. The issue is a bit confused in part because there are a huge number of flu-like illnesses that cannot be easily distinguished from a flu. But <clears throat> unfortunately, to distinguish between one versus the other can, can take a little bit of effort. <clears throat> Infections in hospitals are a serious problem. And I would say that if we can do something to lessen uh, hospital-based infections, that would be a help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative, Representative Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In support, I just wanted to point out that the uh, Centers for D Disease Control lists ten, the 10 greatest public health achievements in the 20th century, and right at the top of the list is immunizations. So if used correctly, it's overall the benefit is huge. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to quote Mr. Trump. It was very significant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Further discussion, members? Representative Yamani followed by Representative Takayama. Mr. Speaker, ruling on a potential conflict, uh, I Speaker. have been uh, in the past the medical social worker and a hospital uh, employee, both in the ER and in the hospital, and would be affected by t being required to take the influenza shot. No conflict, okay. Representative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Representative Takayama? Our reservations, please. So ordered. Thank you very much. Further discussion, Representative Matsumoto, followed by Representative Jordan. No vote, please. So ordered. Representative Jordan. Please note my no vote, Mr. Speaker. So ordered. Although I know the chair has done a lot of great work in hearing this discussion on this particular measure, I have some challenges with requiring individuals, even in a hospital setting, to have this immunization. Personally, I have never taken the flu vaccination that I know of. Um, and I don't want to impose that upon employees that have to make that decision. I think there is just a slim you know, exemption under religious aspects of it. And I don't think many other people could step out of those exemptions that are placed in this particular measure. So therefore, I have some grave concerns on this measure. So it will remain as no, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Thank you very much, Representative. Representative Har. Reservations, please. So ordered. Thank you very much. Further discussion, members? Yes, Representative Brower. Reservations. So ordered. Representative Puha. Reservations. So ordered. Any further discussion? If not, thank you very much. Yes, Representative Craig, in second time still in opposition? Yes, still in opposition. And I, I, I thank the, the Chair of Health for reminding me that this is an experimental vaccine. It's never, it is put out there every year, never having been tested on people. So we don't know what the side effects are we, because we never tested. We only see if it's effective after it's been put out there. So it is human experimentation on a grand scale. The other thing is, unfortunately, uh, the exemption that uh, my friend on the Health Committee uh, indicates was there for wearing masks is not in the bill. And there is no philosophical exemption as is provided in almost every other state that requires this. There is the religious exemption, but as one of the testifiers from one of the health care systems said, well, that only applies to one particular religion because all the others don't have that. So there is no philosophical exemption. There is no allowance for people to wear masks, as many other states provide. And they don't make other people wear masks, even though the other states say this is a very beneficial effect. So I remain in opposition. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any, any further discussion on the measure? Yes, Representative DeCoit. Mr. Speaker, reservations. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion? If not, thank you, members. Top of page 23, Stancom Report number 1280, discussion. Representative Bilotti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, in very strong support. Strong support, please proceed. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong support, and I just, uh, very brief comments. I have two names and a Supreme Court case that I would like to talk about as to why I'm in support of this matter. North Carolina State Board of Dental Examiners versus Federal Trade Commission. This is a Supreme Court case that was decided February 25th, 2015. 
Its holdings are very significant to us as a state. All states, in fact, are, are dealing with this, this ruling. The court held in this ruling that a state board on which a controlling number of decision makers are active participants in the occupation the board regulates must satisfy active supervision requirements in order to invoke state action antitrust immunity. The court further said that if a state wants to rely on active market participants as regulators, it must provide active supervision if state action immunity is to be invoked. Mr. Speaker, here in this state, we have the duty to supervise many, many, many professional boards. Your Committee on Health has over the last three to four years done its due diligence and had many individuals come forward to talk about, in one particular case, the Board of Dental exam Examiners here in this state. Mr. Speaker, this bill is an important measure and I feel like I need to stand up on second reading because I'm not even sure that this will get further hearing, but I look forward to working with the future committee and members on this measure. This measure would seek to clarify what is the legislative intent for the regulation of dentists, dental hygienists, and dental assistants in this state. The three names I would like to leave with you, Speaker, as to why we need to do this, not simply because of a Supreme Court ruling, because we should actively supervise these active market participants who we ask to regulate, but because of the public health and safety in this state. The three names I would like to leave you with are Finley Boyle, three years old, January 2014 passes away, dies after undergoing root canals in a Kailua Honolulu dentist office. Kristen Tavares, 24 years old, mother of two, March 2014, falls into a coma after going in to have her wisdom teeth removed in a Hilo dental office. Recently, this year, and I don't want to say the name of the dental assistant, and I don't know the name of the victim, but March 10th of this year, a dental assistant was charged for assaults and prohibited acts related to controlled substances for administering drugs to a two-year-old girl who became unconscious for 12 hours. Mr. Speaker, we are unfortunate that we do not act because we have been trying to act on this issue for the last three to four years. It would be unfortunate if we did not act. It would be unfortunate that it would take a death of a child on Kauai or Maui or Molokai before we do something. With the extension of pediatric dental health care in all plans because of the Affordable Care Act, we need to take greater responsibility of overseeing the supervision of these kinds of professions that affect the health, safety, and welfare of our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very Thank you very support. much, Representative. Representative Jordan. Yes, Mr. Speaker, that makes it rather difficult for me with reservations. So ordered. And I'll submit comments into the journal. Also so ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members, on the measure before us? If not, thank you. We're going to move on to stand camera report number 1281. Stancom report number 1282. Yes, Representative Jordan. With reservations, Mr. Speaker. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. We're still on Stancom report number 1282. We're going to move on to Stancom report number 1283. Discussion. Top of page 24, Stancom. Yes, Speaker Suki. Stancom report number 1283? Yes, we're on 1283, yes, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, with support with a slight reservation, and let me tell you why there's a slight reservation, because I've been known as, as a champion of the ferry. I also want to thank the Transportation Committee members for passing this measure. I, I think it's very, more, uh, very important that we move it on. I just want to give a little history on... Uh, on the ferry. Uh, there's a lot of blame that goes back that uh, the former governor, and I was the transportation chairman myself uh, during that particular time, uh, did not uh, have an, uh, an, an EIS. The governor was advised by her, her director, who was res responsible for the determining the need of an EIS or not, that there was no need for an EIS. This was given to the governor, as it is an ocean-going vessel. 
I didn't quite believe the government, even though she was from Maui and Molokai. I went and went and called the person myself. And she said, yes, it's, the committee felt, and she felt that as an ocean-going vessel, there is no need for an EIS. Then may I just go on a little bit? We have a ferry that has been going on for years between uh, uh, Lahaina and, and uh, Lanai and in Molokai. Uh, no EIS is required of them. Uh, we have a new ocean vessel in Pasha that it has a roll on, roll off, and it's quite different than the other, the other um, uh, freight uh, boats that come to, to Hawaii, and they didn't require it. And of course, they never did require in the days past of Young Brothers and Madsen and any of those. And of course, you got the Navy ships going up and down. That's not, not required. So it's an imposition that was put upon by people who just didn't, for some reason, didn't want the ferry. And of course, a judge then, be, and he's my good personal friend, uh, uh, believed them, and he accepted that there was a need for a ferry. I mean, for an, uh, for an EIS. So okay, so be it. There will be an EIS, but I want to give you a history of this, of why this major came about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker Suki. Thank you very much. Any further discussion, members? Stand Com Report number 1283. If not, thank you very much. Top of page 24, Stand Com Report number 1284. Stand Com Report number 1285. Stand Com Report number 1286. Stand Com Report number 1287. Stand come report number 1288. Representative Thielen. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm in support with some reservations. Reservations, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, what this would do is um, establish a, the Office of Planning as the lead state at agency for trans, transit oriented development coordination. There's a sense to doing that, but there's a real void in the makeup of the group. You read the um, list of the different people that are to be on that, and they're all government related. Uh, there, we don't have the development um, community in there, and there should certainly be more than one token person. But by development community, I mean those people that are uh, experienced in putting shovels to the ground and building affordable or low cost housing. That's the b brain that we need on that group, rather than just government people. So I hope as the bill moves forward, uh, that it, they could, the next committee, finance committee, could take a look at that um, makeup and get rid of a few of the, what is it, 14, 15 government people, put in those with real actual knowledge of how to do this, so it doesn't just become a talk story group but it becomes an effective group that's going to result in affordable and low-cost housing being built. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? If not, thank you very much. Stancom Report number 1289. Stancom Report number 1290. Stancom Report number 1291. Top of page 26, Stancom Report number 1292. Yes, Representative McKelvey. I hate to do this. You are lightning fast today, Mr. Speaker. Could I just really quickly, if it's okay with you, go back to um, Stancom, oh gosh, which is it? Give me a second here. The transportation one, we just um, recess real quickly. Just one sec, just recess. Short recess. Will the House come to order? Chair recognizes Representative McKelvey. Y your mic's off. It's my day to screw up. 1287, Mr. Speaker. 
1287. Absolutely, we'll go back to 1287. Representative McKelvey. S super fast, strong support. Comments to the journal. We'd really like to thank the transportation chair. Thank Absolutely, you. so ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Representative Thielen. Thank you, and Mr. Speaker, on 1288, I forgot to ask, may I also have remarks to the journal, please? Yes, with, that's WR, still WR, and remarks to the journal on 1288 for Thielen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, did I miss anyone? We are on stand report number 1292. I know we've been going at a torrid pace. Did I miss anyone on any of the prior SANCOM reports? If not, thank you very much. Stand report number 1292. Stancom report number 1293. Stancom report number 1294. Representative Speaker, Ward. Uh, support with a brief uh, demographic footnote, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed in support. I, I just wanted to create the awareness that we are in the process, not knowingly, but creating a smoking underclass. The more that these bills are heard, the more that I hear that those who have stopped smoking are generally those in the upper and the middle classes. What we've got now is a smoking underclass. Those who can least afford it are the ones who are going to get hit with this tax, just like gambling. Those who can least afford to gamble are the ones who gamble. Just so we know that as we put the percent or the per cigarette tax on this, that it's going to a regressive purpose, the same way the GED tax, they say it's very regressive because the poor pay more. The same, Mr. Speaker, if there's any mental health benefits to the poor having a cigarette, I think we have to be cognizant of that. For those reasons, I'm in support, but I think we should be cognizant of what we're doing demographically. Thank you, Thank you very much, Representative. Further discussion, members? Stand camera report number 1294. Yes, Representative Jordan. Reservations at this moment in time. So ordered. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? If not, thank you very much. Stand camera report number 1295. Yes, Representative Johansson, followed by Representative Fukumoto. Uh, thank you. Reservation, please. So ordered. To insert written comments. Also so ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Representative Fukumoto. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Reservations, please. So ordered. Representative Puha. Same request. So ordered. Representative Ward. Speaker, no vote. No vote. In and opposition, please proceed. In that we are changing rules of the game when we're in about in the next couple of uh, months to give licenses for uh, medical marijuana. I would request that my comments in the journal for HB 1808 uh, be entered in for this one. Even though that one is dead, my comments still yes, are alive. Yes, so ordered. Thank you. Absolutely. Representative McDermott. No vote. So ordered. Thank you very much. Representative Matsumoto. With reservations. So ordered. Thank you very much. Representative Har. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No vote. And may I please incorporate the words of the Minority Leader Emeritus into the journals if they were my own. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Representative Bilotti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In support and real brief, um, if the, to read the contents of the bill, you'll see that what's a, uh, what we're changing is not the definition for this current application period. It would be for the next application period and not for this period. So I just want to correct the record. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion, members? Stand time report number 1295. Okay, if not, thank you very much. Top of page 27. Stand come report number 1296. Yes, Representative Ichiyama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, with reservations, I appreciate the work that the committees did on the bill to make some changes, but I'd just like to note my reservations. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Representative Johansson. Uh, may I also have reservations and permission to insert written comments? So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Yes, Representative Har. Same request, please. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? If not, thank you very much, members. Stancom report number 1297. Stancom report number 1298. Stancom report number 1299. Stancom report number 1300. Stancom report number 1301. Stancom report number 1302. Stancom report number 1303. Stancom report number 1304. Yes, Representative Jordan. Please note my reservations, Mr. Speaker. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion? Stancom report number 1304. If not, thank you. Stancom report number 1305. Stancom report number 1306. Stancom report number 1307. Top page 30, Stancom report number 1308. Stancom report number 1309. 
Stancom report number 1310. Stancom report number 1311. Stancom report number 1312. Top of page 31, Stancom report number 1313. Stancom report number 1314. Representative Jordan. Note my reservations, Mr. Speaker. So ordered. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Stancom report 1314. Thank you, members. Stancom report number 1315. Discussion? Stancom report number 1316. Representative McDermott. No vote, please. So ordered. Thank you very much. Representative Ward. Speaker, another no vote for let's kill competition bill in the medical field. So ordered. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion? Representative McKelvey. Uh, in support and to save time, a federal version of this act was just introduced with Maisie Hirono and two Republican senators. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Members, stand come report number 1316. If there is no further discussion on the second reading bills, we will be taking a voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is carried. Representative Psyche. Mr. Speaker, I move to adopt SDR number 1317-16 on page 32 and that Senate bill number 2856 pass second reading and be placed on the calendar for a third reading. Thank you very much, Representative Evans. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Thank you very much. Members, it's been moved and seconded. This is on Stancom report number 1317. Top of page 32, discussion. If there is no discussion, we will be taking a voice vote on this measure. All those in support signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is carried. Representative Psyche. Mr. Speaker, I move to adopt SCR numbers 1318-16 through 1344-16 on pages 32 through 38, and that the respective amended and unamended House resolutions and House concurrent resolutions be referred to their designated committees. Thank you very much. Representative Evans. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded. Members, discussion. Page 32, Stancom Report number 1318. Speaker. Representative Ward. Speaker, a no vote, please. In opposition, please proceed. Uh, speaker, just very briefly, this has the DNA of the state bank, and the state bank is now morphing for the sake of marijuana. I think this is not the right direction to having the tail wagging the dog. Medical marijuana, medical is medical marijuana, but having to create a banking system around that is really trying to preempt what otherwise we have as an established banking system. And I think the patience that this uh, bill implies, or the lack of patience that this bill implies is uh, uncalled for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion on the uh, Stancom report number 1318 on the measure before us? If not, thank you very much. We're going to take these two next measures in tandem, their companions. Stancom report numbers 1319 and 1320. Discussion. Top of page 33. Again, the next two resolutions are companions. Stancom report number 1321 and 1322, discussion. Next two are also companions. Stancom report numbers 1323 and 1324, discussion. Top of page 34, companion resolutions. Stancom report numbers 1325 and 1326, discussion. Next two measures are also companion resolutions. Stancom report numbers 1327 and 1328. Discussion. Top of page 35, Stancom report number 1329. Stancom report number 1330. And the next two measures are also companion resolutions. Stancom report numbers 1331 and 1332. Discussion. Top of page 36, companion resolutions, Stancom report numbers 1333 and 1334, discussion. Next two measures are also companion resolutions, Stancom report numbers 1335 and 1336, discussion. Top of page 37, 
companion resolutions, stand come report numbers 1337 and 1338. Discussion. Next measure, stand come report number 1339. Top of page 38, stand come report number 1340. Discussion. Yes, Representative Jordan. Yes, Mr. Speaker, please note my no reserve my no vote. No vote. So ordered. Um, just a few comments. Please Mr. proceed. Mr. Speaker, this is Crown land and my stance. I don't think we should be selling any Crown land or any government lands prior to 1895. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. Any further discussion? Stand come report number 1340. If not, thank you very much, members. Stand come report number 1341. Discussion. Stand come report number 1342. Any discussion? Stand come report number 1343. Discussion. Stand come report number 1344. Any discussion? There is no further discussion, members. We'll be taking a voice vote. This is for stand come report numbers 1318 through 1344 as listed on pages 32 through 48. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is carried. Members, are there any announcements? Any announcements? There's no announcements. Have a great Easter weekend. Representative Evans. Mr. Speaker, I move the House stand adjourned until 12 noon Monday. Thank you very much. Representative Puha. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed saying no. The motion is carried. The House stands adjourned until 12 noon Monday.